Something about this thing every time, don't we? Okay, if 
not, then we will um, vote. And when Madam Clerk calls out your name, uh, state the name, please. So it looks like we only have one candidate. What's your name? Yeah. The name is Brett Burke. Thank you. 
since I've been here. Thank you. My name is Diane Shepard, S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D. I live at 89 Main Street, Big Sandy. Several months ago, I became aware of several incidents which concerned me as a law-abiding citizen of Benton County. In the interest of time, I will not go into the details, but I have copies of the FOIA request which I have forwarded to or passed on to the interim mayor and uh, Madam Chair. I filed two Freedom of Information Act FOIA requests with Benton County Sheriff Kenny Christopher after my attempts to meet with him were unsuccessful because he adamantly insisted he does not do recorded interviews. I tried to explain my position for wanting to record our meeting as I understood Tennessee's one-party consent recording law, Tennessee Code 40-6-303. Based on the sheriff's responses to the FOIA requests, I can only infer that either the sheriff was unwilling to provide the requested materials or provide a valid reason for withholding requested materials, or that the Benton County Sheriff's Department operates without written procedures or training materials for its officers. Either possibility is disturbing. In the first inference, the sheriff purposely circumvented Tennessee Open Records Act, Tennessee Code 10-7-503 and the following. In the second inference, Officers sworn to uphold the law and protect Breton County citizens are carrying out their duties without uniformly understood written procedures or are in the same instance acting or in some instance acting in direct violation of the law. Ironically, my initial desire was to understand the sheriff's perspectives on the incidents and offer help in developing written procedural manuals and training, and training materials in conjunction with the department. However, the inability or unwillingness on this has convinced me to make my concerns public. 
Equally disturbing was my discovery that the sheriff is not accountable to anyone in regard on how he runs his department. It has been said, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I hope that the Benton County Interim Mayor and Commissioners will look into the matter further. Citizens of Benton County deserve their attention in this matter. Thank you. I've got, I brought uh, 30 of the books. Back when I served as your representative, you had 24 members. I had forgot you had reduced the number to 18, but I bought enough, brought enough books for everybody. And this book is the book that John Latham wrote on the history of the Magic Valley. We were going to use it to promote and sell so we could have money to raise the bun gunboats, but the federal government decided the gunboat was not going to be raised. So that was the end of our our venture. And I'm left with several of these books, and, and I would like for you to you, to, to read this and, and share it with, with others that it has some interesting programs. It has a complete story of uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest, it starts at the primitive Indians and carries that on through until John's time and he died. But the pronounced article in here that he wrote, he was in charge of the news and getting it out and the search operation for the plane wreck of Hawkshaw Hawkins and and up that yeah, he was and there's a very good account of that in here there's account of, of rumors such as uh, John Wilkes Booth having taught school in the area here and he, if you remember 
that John Wilkes Booth was killed and it was supposedly they burned the, the barn down and they weren't sure that it was him and, and rumors were that he taught school here in, in, uh, at the Bodine School just across the river, I think. But there's, there's a lot of interesting things like that. The world's largest man is in here from Darden, Tennessee. And uh, all, anything John could think of, including the, the uh, submarine that they dug up, of the Civil War submarine, it's a, an added article to that. I hope you enjoy the book and uh, remember what's going on and, and what has gone on in Benton and Humphreys County. I do appreciate the opportunity to get here and I appreciate the uh, introduction and and I'm, I'm the sole author and sole sponsor of the Tennessee River Resort Act that you join that you, and you and I, I'm thinking you get somewhere around two or three hundred thousand dollars a year even after I've gone. But uh, you'll see that on there. When you see that dollar amount, think of me. <laughs> Appreciate it. I enjoyed serving you. Mr. Chairman, and um, Mr. Fowler just um, told me that you, is there, were also, yeah. that you were also um, the one that supported the vintage license plate. That you yes. Could get on the, uh, yeah, on I, I wrote the uh, vintage license plates. I wrote every bill that has to do with for the... Uh, harvesting of forestry. Along with Bob Farmer, we rewrote the laws that dealt with uh, West Vaco and ended up with West, West Vaco paying more taxes and selling back to the public and completely leaving your county. And uh, I, I enjoyed representing you. Enjoyed the whole time I was there. It was quite a process and I sure enjoyed representing Benton County. I always attributed Benton County as having put me in. Humphreys County was supposed to vote for me, but Benton County did that night. <laughs> Thank you a lot. You. I'll, I'll be forever humble. Any, any of the audience uh, would like a book? I, I, I brought the circuit. You were around when I was around. I know. It's a good man right here. He was there when I was.
it is for the opioid settlement. I do not have exact figures. The, at the end of that particular piece of information, you'll see the table to be inserted later when they figure out how much we're getting. That's going to be based upon who, or rather, which counties uh, opt into the settlement. So uh, once I know that, I will be getting that information out to you. But the first step is that we do need to pass that because it will be generating money back to Benton County. I can't tell you what strings may be attached to it or how it has to be spent, but we do, um, we have certainly seen the problems that opioids have caused. And so if this can help to remediate the damages that that uh, terrible addiction has caused, then we certainly want to be a participant in that. Uh, I have an invitation on behalf of Director Mark Florence, who could not be here for uh, uh, personal reasons, but he wanted me to make sure that you knew about December the 9th, December the 9th at Briarwood School at 5 p.m. December the 9th, Briarwood School, 5 p.m. It's going to be a, a, a much like we had tonight, an informal non-meeting, just an informal get to know each other where you come together with the school board and the county commission in a, in a fellowship uh, for Christmas. 5 p.m. December the 9th at Barber School. That's going to be an informal get together, get to know one another because you have to work together. It's good to do this. And so COVID knocked it out last year or so, but we've done this before and we'd like to start this back up again. Just as you had the desserts tonight with the Thanksgiving type theme, um, at this time, the Senior Citizen Center has said, I've got to confirm it with them, but they'd like to do the same thing for you on December the 20th if you decide to have your meeting on December the 20th. I think you will at uh, 5 p.m. So uh, come again uh, at December the 20th at 5 p.m. The Senior Citizen Center right now may change. We'll still do the desserts whether the Senior Citizen do them or not, but this will have obviously a Christmas theme to it. I thought it was great to see all of you fellowshipping with each other and having uh, just a a time of uh, camaraderie, so we'll do that again. I will say those are the only two that we're going to be doing for a while, because I know it's Thanksgiving and Christmas, so. Um, also, I'll let you know that December the 11th is Christmas on the Square. That's our Christmas parade, and uh, uh, the Business Association will have uh, some things going on as well. Uh, we're hoping to have a, a, a nice uh, Christmas tree up on the outside of Port Square for a been a while since we've had one of those, so we hope to have all that going for you. <sighs> and that'll be again Saturday, December the 11th. I want to tell you about a new, the new Chamber of Commerce Director, Ms. Lori Matlock. Um, she has been named the new Chamber Director. I think she'll do a great job for them. Uh, Lori Matlock, she's a native here. You may remember her. Um, there has been um, some issues about the handicap parking on whatever side that is, the direction. The north. north. That's the north, on the north side. Well, we're going to move that handicap parking spot to the north side and move it down closer to um, the, the east side, and we're going to make it a disabled veterans parking area. And so uh, they're going to have their own designated spot that allows them to get access to the veteran service officer a little easier so they're going to have that spot will be made available to if you don't know exactly where that is it's currently marked it says the maintenance spot so we're going to bring them inside the employee area parking that will allow them to get out even in handicap wheelchair accessibility all the way up uh, straight to the door if they need to for that so we're proud to be able to do that and we're getting the signs made now to, to facilitate that. so that parking handicap parking will go away and then we'll have the disabled veterans parking on the, uh, the side here for them. So we're happy to do that. Also, I'm very pleased to tell you about a $75,000 no match grant that we had uh, to help uh, with the air quality in the court uh, house and jail. And this system, we believe, when implemented uh, fully, will allow for uh, inmate sickness to go down and to um, keep COVID and anything else, it will attack influenza, mold, fungus, other viruses, cold virus, whatever, and it will permeate the whole area here. And so we're hoping to have that in place as soon as they release the, the money for us to get that order in place. So I'm expecting by at least January that you should see that system in place. And so we were happy to get that. And 
we'll get it installed in the jail at the sheriff's convenience once we get those as well. And hopefully we'll see some good turnaround on that, that the COVID outbreaks, the flu outbreaks and all that will go way down. You can leave it in place with people there. They use it in Lafarna Hospital, other hospitals uh, around. It sterilizes the, the, the areas that, where your hands go, uh, hanging curtains, all that. It takes care of everything. You can actually be in the room while it's running. So it's just quietly in the background taking care of, taking care of the problem. So I'm glad to have that grant available to us here at the courthouse and the, um, of the jail. And Madam Chair, that's all I have for the questions. Any questions? Okay, if not. Commissioner King. Thank you. Uh, it's nothing for the mayor. Uh, we, we skipped on the commissioner for him. I was thinking to go back to that. Okay. Uh, what I want to bring up last month, uh, a point of order, uh, I abstained in a vote and I was told I couldn't do that without explaining. And I, that is incorrect. You can abstain. You do not have to explain why. If it is a conflict, then uh, you can say it at that time and it don't count towards the vote. If it's a computer issue, then fix the computer. But I just want everybody to understand that if you abstain, you do not have to explain why. Okay. Was there a computer? No, there were advised by our attorney that anytime anybody abstains, they can vote a no vote. But if it was abstaining, you had to explain why that was some large person. Do you have any remark on that? I, I talked to the commissioner about that. And an issue is there's a middle ground there, and I think he understands it as well. And, and you all, it's so that they can know whether it is or not for the voting count. So you don't have to give like a long explanation, but they just have to know enough to know whether to remove that from the count or not. So whether it's a conflict or if it's just someone choosing not to. It's like an abstention for calls or something like that. So you don't have to give like a full explanation of it, but they just need to know enough to know if you want to pull it out of that account or not. And, and he and I talked about that before. He mentioned that to me because I wasn't here whenever that came up. So he told me before we even started today. Okay. The way I understand it, if you want to vote no, since we don't have the button, you don't push anything. You let it time out, and then that will automatically be a no vote. Yeah. That's the whole purpose of what he's talking about. If you want to abstain, you don't vote, period. But then you turn around and turn it into a no vote. Well, he pressed abstain and not. Last month, he pressed the button to abstain, and not let it time out to account for no vote. Because so, I didn't want to vote, no, I wanted to abstain and not vote. You see, you understand where I'm coming. It's the same that. thing if, if you ask somebody why they voted no. It, it doesn't make sense. So in, in that case of what happened last month, uh, just don't vote anything. Don't press anything. It will time out, and then it will register correctly. Unless you're abstaining with cause. Unless yeah. you're abstaining with cause, yes. Okay. Okay. Do we all understand? Yes. Okay. Um, like I said, we had skipped the commissioner's form, so we're going to back up. Do we have any other commissioner? Okay, if not, we're going on to number 10 on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. We need a motion and a second. We have a motion by Mr. Hicks and a second by Mr. Ferguson. Any discussion? Vote. Please vote. Robert Preston. Present. Yes. Brent Hart. Yes. Anyone wish to change your vote? Motion carries 16 yes. Next is the report of the public utilities. We have a motion by Commissioner Ferguson and a second by Commissioner Frazier. Any discussion? If not, are you on I apologize. No, hit the wrong button. <laughs> well, let's see. It looks like it was Mr. Frazier and that's <laughs> Rocky Preston. Yes. Brett Hart. Yes. You know, wish to change your vote. 
16 weeks of the period. Okay, next is the approval of the Benton County Schools Agreement with the National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance. We have a motion by Commissioner Hicks and second by Commissioner Ferguson. Any discussion on this? Questions? This is a new thing. Um, in times past, the Board of Education has been able to approve their own and move forward, but with uh, input from the auditors, they <coughs> suggested that since you are a funding body, that you should approve it. So that's why you're seeing that uh, for the first time. And uh, so that would be the policy going forward. That I don't have to approve any agreements for such purchasing. And there's lots of different companies that do this, but all of them have to be approved by you. Commissioner Hill? Is this an annual thing? No. Once you're in, you're in the Okay. Any others? Right. If not, we'll vote. Please. Yes. Fred Barr? Yes. Anyone wish to change their vote? Next is the approval of the report on the debt obligation for the county's $2 million capital outlay note. I have a motion by Commissioner Hicks and a second by Commissioner Stokes to bring this to the floor. Any discussion? If none, then everyone vote to approve it or not to approve it. Yes. Yes. Anyone wish to change their vote? 15 yes, 1 no. Okay, next is uh, the beginning of our resolutions, which is resolution number one, which is reappointing Jennifer Hedge to the Benton County Audit Committee for a four year term. We have a motion by Commissioner Hicks and a second by Commissioner Stokes. Ms. Hedge could not be here because of a conflict. Any discussion or questions? If not, everyone vote, please. Rocky Price? Yes. Brent Carter? Yes. Anyone wish to change your change your vote? Sixteen, yes. Resolution two is to appoint Jolene Costa to the Bent County Animal Shelter Board to fill a vacancy in existing term. We have a motion by Commissioner Hicks and a second by Commissioner Ferguson. Any questions about this appointment? Um, Joel Costa was supposed to be here this evening, but she was held up at work in Martin and she could not leave in time to make the meeting. She wanted to apologize to the commission for not being here to present herself. For those of you that may not know, Ms. Costa was a former employee at the uh, animal shelter, and she uh, did a fine job while she was there. And she's also the, the board knows the animal shelter board knows of her seeking this position. They're in favor of it, as well as the director of the animal shelter, Mr. Blaine Turner. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Any further questions? Everyone vote, please. Yes. Brett Carter? Yes. Do you know what you're trying to vote? 15 yes and one no. Resolution number three is to appoint Bonnie Evans to the Benton County Solid Waste Board to fill a vacancy, an existing term which expires February the 18th. Any questions? We have a motion by Commissioner Stokes and second by Commissioner Frazier. Um, Commissioner Ferguson. All right. I'm just going to say most of these were approved by the budget committee, but I'm not going to um, say every single one, but I'll tell them if there weren't recommended by the budget. How does that sound? Okay. Any other comments? Okay. If not, everyone vote. Yes. Yes. 
you know, what should change their vote? Motion carries 14 yes to no. Okay, next is resolution number four. To amend the previous action by the legislative body and to correct the rollover balance amount of the governor's set aside grant number one. I have a motion by Commissioner Stokes and a second by Commissioner Ferguson. Do we have any questions about this or discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, just it's like to maybe explain what this is. Roll is this where we miss it? We pick it back up, or what are we doing on the rollover? This is where some of the funds were were appropriated, and in the previous resolution, you had it where the the entire amount was done, but but your budget actually had some of the funds already there that were just overlooked and so we're having to correct the fact just to get the entire amount over so this is just a correction to make sure that we're appropriating back into the budget the correct amounts so uh, the, uh, some had already put in and this is just uh, fixing filling that gap thank you anyone else I can't do it Okay, why do you want to state your amendment? 
if we need to amend this to a uh, corrected amount and line item, and I'm going to defer to Ashley, she has the correct information. Um, we ended up getting more money on this capital outlay note than what we had originally budgeted in the budget. We had just put a flat two million. Um, so we actually need to amend this amount, the hundred and fourteen thousand three sixty nine thirty, to be one hundred and fifty four thousand three hundred and sixty nine dollars and thirty one cents because they sank forty thousand early in good faith money which was not taken into consideration um, when this resolution was done and 114,000 was drafted. Also, we need to amend the account numbers. So your revenue and your expenditures here, we will tack on at the end, 101. And that will be a cost center in our accounting software, which will keep these funds tracked completely separate from any other funds in Fund 171 capital projects. So for example, your increased revenues, that account will now read 171.49200.101. Your expenditure will be 171.91110.724.1101. that we actually got that loan on is the amount. The first year you have to pay in, I think it's around $39,000 uh, on the, the first year's interest. And so this will take care of that and all the costs associated with just actually going through the paperwork of uh, borrowing the money. Didn't we get it at one point? You got three. it at 1.38. 1.38 interest, which is 
phenomenally good interest. And that also has to go with because you, as a commission, have been financially, um, um, you have been good stewards, and so Benton County, for its size, probably has the best classification rating on the um, Moody schedule than it could have, and that's an A plus rating. Uh, we'd probably be better, if we were a larger county, we'd have a better rating, but for our size, we'd probably have the best rating we could get, that's an A plus. And that's because of the conservatorship that you've taken with the uh, taxpayers' money and keeping our debt ratio down, all this. Any other questions about that? Okay, if not, we're going to vote on the amendment first. Yes. Yes. Anyone wish to change your vote? Motion carries 16 minutes. Okay, now we're going to vote on the resolution as it was amended. number six on the agenda is the resolution authorizing Big County to join the state of Tennessee and other local governments and participants in the Tennessee State Subdivision Opioid Abatement Agreement and approving the related settlement agreements. We have a motion by Commissioner Hicks and a second by Commissioner Ferguson to bring it to the floor. Any discussion? Do you have any idea about what the settlement might be? They're okay. in the package. You see, I think they have a cap at some six hundred and nineteen million, something like that, that they're, they're coming to the state of Tennessee. But exactly how that uh, plays out for each county, uh, the plan is going to be uh, largely determined by which county wants to participate. Because if the county does not participate, then that means that the tie that we're getting more comes to the future law. I hope if we get something like that, we put it back to education. To the it, I'm, I'm all, I, I would be absolutely all in favor of that, but I'm pretty sure there will be some pretty detailed strings attached to this money. If not, that would be a great use of the funds. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Then we're going to move on to number seven on your agenda. Is a resolution acting as an agreement between Benton County Sheriff's Office and the Benton County E911 Board? We have a motion by Commissioner Hicks and second by Commissioner Melton. Any questions? Discussion? If not, everyone vote, please. Mr. President? Yes. Craig Hart? Yes. Anyone wish to change their vote? 
Number eight is a resolution budgeting funds received in the amount of $5,214.95 from the state of Tennessee for the Benton County Airport Maintenance Grant. A motion by Commissioner Hicks and a second by Commissioner Melton. Any questions? I don't have any, so everyone vote, please. Rocky Price? Yes. Brett Bird? Yes. Anyone wish to change your vote? Yes. Number nine on the agenda is a resolution budgeting funds received in the amount of $530 from donations during the month of October within the animal shelter budget. Motion by Commissioner Stokes and we have a second by Commissioner Milton. Any questions on this resolution? If none, everyone vote please. Yes. Brett Hart? Yes. Anyone wish to change your vote? 16 yes. Motion carries. Number 10 is a resolution budgeting funds received in the amount of $4,500 from the City of Camden for their quarterly contribution to the Benton County Library. I have a motion by Commissioner Hicks and a second by Commissioner Melton. Any questions on this one? If not, Anyone vote, please? Walking Preston? Yes. Brett Hart? Yes. Hold on. I pulled it up. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what you change the vote? Motion carries 16 yes. Number 11 is the resolution budgeting funds received in the amount of $1,475 for the ROI fees within the medical examiner's budget. Motion by Commissioner Hicks and second by Commissioner Milton. Any questions? If none, please vote. Dr. Preston? Yes. Brett Hart? Yes. Anyone wish to change their vote? Motion carries 16 minutes.
we had a motion by Commissioner Hicks and a second by Commissioner Stokes. Any questions about this one? Okay, if none, please vote. Monkey Person? Yes. Chris Murray? Yes. Anyone wish to change their vote? Motion to 16. The next one is a school resolution transferring funds in the amount of seven thousand dollars within the school budget. Motion by Commissioner Hicks and second by Commissioner Stokes. Any questions? Everyone, please vote. Rocky Preston. Yes. Fred Carter. Yes. Anyone want to change their vote? Number 16 on the agenda is budgeting funds received in the amount of $344.23 from medical claim reimbursements within the sheriff's budget. A motion by Commissioner Hicks and a second by Commissioner Ferguson. Any questions about this? If none, just one to vote. Marky Preston? Yes. Number 17 is resolution budgeting funds received in the amount of $3,772.69 within the sheriff's budget. Motion by Commissioner Hicks and second by Commissioner Melton. Anyone want to ask questions about this? If none, everyone vote please. Thank you, Preston. Yes. Brett Gard? Yes. Number 18 is a resolution to appropriate funds in the amount of $78,750 from the unassigned fund balance within Fund 178 other capital projects for the reimbursable tourism enhancement grant. Motion by Commissioner Hicks and a second by Commissioner Ferguson. Commissioner Hopper. Yeah, I, uh, I'd just like to say I don't, I don't think we need to get into this project. Uh, right now because of uh, all the other stuff we've got going on uh, even though this is kind of free money we're going to get started on that project and wind up in the middle of it and I don't like the idea. Mr. Hopper I agree with you 100% and so what we're doing with this is uh, using this money it does have a, a small match with it but, um, it's a $75,000 grant there about has a match but what we're going to be doing is getting some enhanced uh, drawings for multiple phases where we can then take these enhanced drawings as a comprehensive plan and begin working out uh, for future grants to bring this area to uh, completion uh, if it's the desire of the to do so. So now this is not going to, we're not going to be in the middle of a project and something more money to be required. We're just getting some very comprehensive, detailed drawings that we can then take and parlay into a, 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 a master plan, if you will, that we can then take and parlay into something a little bit better. So. Okay. Uh, no, also, that this is a grant that we've already had for a year now, yes. and it just wasn't utilized before June 30th for our fiscal year end, so it needs to be rolled over into this current budget. But we've already been awarded this grant, we've had it for a year. Unlike other grants where we did not apply for them and it would be no harm to Benton County by not moving forward with them, if we did not utilize this grant, since we've been awarded the grant, meaning other people did not get the money, this would be a black eye on Benton County's uh, face. So we do not want that. 
we did not want to position ourselves uh, poorly in the face of the, of the state. So that's why we're looking at a master plan project as opposed to trying to get in the middle of building this amphitheater in the middle of the morning. The worst possible time to move Well, can we, can we at least get some of these other projects done before we This money, in? other than the few thousand dollars that you're putting into it for a match, this money is all grant money that's already just passing through. So you, this will not impact anything that we're doing. And, and I agree with you totally. Don't look at it as a project. Like you said, it's not breaking ground. This is all for uh, services and giving us a master plan. It's not breaking ground. It's not a project like what we're all thinking. <laughs> well, I just, I just don't want to get another project started. So. <clears throat> Any other? Um, yes, Chairman. I'm done. done. Well, she answered it there. So we're <clears throat> getting paid three thousand. Cost of seventy-five thousand dollars for some plans, or the grant pays for it. The grant pays. The grant pays for all of those plans, but uh, I'll tell you that you know architectural fees and engineering fees are quite expensive, and uh, some of us today were talking about we might we might have gone to the wrong business ourselves. Oh, uh, but actually, seventy-five thousand will not get you all the way out to do every uh, every aspect, every virtual every possible aspect of this project. But no groundbreaking. There'll be no groundbreaking. And I've gotten that approved by the state, our, our Northwest consultant, the architect and engineers, everybody's on board with this to, to make this a reality. In fact, we're going to have some plans that we can then begin targeting some very specific grants to help out to bring this to fruition, should it be the desire of the commission to do so. Any other questions, Mr. Just a statement, um, just a statement. Mayor, The uh, your response to the tourism enhancement grant, thank you, they were very well put, and I uh, appreciate your comments on that. Thank you. Okay, any others? Looks like we have none. So, uh, everyone vote, please. Mark McPherson? Yes. Brett Carter? Yes. Anyone you know wish to change their vote? Motion carries 16 yes. Resolution to appropriate funds in the amount of three hundred thousand from the unassigned fund balance within Fund One Seventy Two Community Development for the CDBG EMA grant project. I have a motion by Commissioner Hicks and a second by Commissioner Ferguson. Any questions? Again, this is existing money. All we're doing is putting it into the line items for the anticipation of maybe sometime before we all retire being able to get this EMA building bought and move forward with that particular project. So again, this is existing money, nothing new here, and we're trying to get that as um, our, our attorneys are working diligently with the other side. Maybe they'll pick up the pace on the other side and get everything moving forward. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Frazier. Thank you, Mr. Rapper. You did. Uh, Mayor, is that the 315 that we've been working from? Well, we already spent a little bit out of it last year, so it is now just 300,000. Uh, so so we got to make up the difference. We got to make up the difference, and there's probably a little bit more that's got to come out of it to be made up uh, for the total purchase. <coughs> what we're anticipating to the agreed purchase price for that building. Thanks, sir. Okay. Any others? Doesn't show we have any, so everyone vote, please. Questions? Okay. Roll call. Everyone vote, please. 
Rocky Tyson? Yes. Brett Barr? Yes. Commission to purchase two new computers and be reimbursed by the State of Tennessee Department of Elections. A motion by Commissioner Hicks and a second by Commissioner Ferguson. Any questions? Okay, please vote. Mike Preston? Yes. Brett Bard? Yes.
October, and it wasn't the month of Veterans Day. But since this is just the week after, I, and we didn't get to recognize any of our veterans that are here last month, I'd like to do that tonight. So if we have any veterans in the room tonight, please stand up. Let us thank you for your service. I will tell you what. I will tell you what. 